aspect of their forces is bigger than ours, but still um, I hope and, uh, that we can make it, but much depends, very much depends, upon where the battle is. Israel attacked first. The surprise Israeli airstrike wiped out the Egyptian and Syrian air forces. With the skies free, Israel defeated the Arab armies. When Jordan ignored Israel's warning and joined Egypt and Syria by shelling Jerusalem, the Israeli army conquered Jerusalem's old city and Jordan's West Bank, all in just six days. With victory came territory. Initially, Israel's ruling politicians regarded these gains as temporary, but they hurried to annex Jerusalem, defying international law in the process. By conquering the West Bank, Gaza, Sinai and the Golan Heights, Israel tripled in size. But what are going to be the next steps? Who's going to telephone who in order to secure a long-term solution for the Middle East problem? I think that we can wait for a call. I, I don't see anything wrong with the present situation. I don't know why should we approach anyone about anything. With, as far as I'm concerned, we are just happy as it is now. And if the others are happy, so that's it. But the others aren't going to be happy where oh, they are, they? Let, let them ring us up. <laughs> But little good came from Israel's south. Israel held on to the Suez Canal in Sinai, seized from Egypt in 1967. Diane suggested a limited withdrawal from the canal, but abandoned the idea when it was opposed. Diane then repeatedly rejected, out of hand, Egyptian demands for the return of their land. <laughs> Syria joined Egypt in demanding the return of its territory in the Golan Heights. Diane failed to understand the seriousness of the military threat Egypt and Syria posed. No one will capitulate here in this country. I am not ready to capitulate or to surrender one inch or a piece of sand from our land. <laughs> I think I'll see a couple of days